get a business, you can go anywhere. And we're just really thankful that you chose Rochelle. Your services that you provide in today's world are more important than ever. And it's going to be able to help many folks get back on their feet, going to be able to get folks on the right track, and we just so appreciate that. Uh, as we always talk about the partnership you know, between the Chamber of Commerce, the business, and the city, uh, we're, we're here as your partner as well. And if there's anything we can do within our means to help you, that's what we want to do. Our goal is to make sure that each and every business in the community stays successful and moves, not only sustains their place in our community, but grows and expands. And I, I heard talk earlier with the crowd today, we may need a little bigger room. So uh, I think that would be awesome. Uh, once again, it is an extremely, extremely, I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart, it's very important what you do, truly. Uh, you don't just sell groceries, you don't just sell hardware, you sell service to people that truly need it. And we're so appreciative of that, and welcome to Rochelle. So we are fortunate to also have our state representative here today. Thank you for carving a little time out of your busy schedule. Thank you, Pipers, for getting in here. <laughs> um, state Representative Brad Fritz. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. You know, thank you, Gerald, and all of you guys um, for the incredible job you do. Uh, you know, Gerald, you and I met back uh, when I bought my first car. You were the guy on the other side of the table who was uh, trying to sell me the extended warranty. <laughs> Which you did not but, buy. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just, I can't thank you enough from a state perspective, from my perspective personally, about what you've done for um, our whole district and our community. Um, you know, growing up, and and it still is, and you see it across the whole state, what a stigmatized thing it is when you're talking about substance abuse and recovery. And it's, it's an illness just like anything else. And I think you've done a phenomenal job, and it's a testament to everyone who's here today to take a little bit of the stigma away and say that there are resources, there are help, and um, it's a pleasure to work with you at the state level to be able to continue to bring resources down to our local communities, and a pleasure to have you as a part of the community because there's not one of us in this room who hasn't been touched by it in some way, shape, or form. So. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for that and look forward to continuing to be a resource for you at the state level. So thank, thank you. Okay, so now we get to hear from Gerald and Heather. Um, I'm not sure who's going to, probably Gerald. Um, yeah? Okay. And you guys can kind of tell us your story. Um, it all started in a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... As Brad said, I was working selling cars, and um, I am a person in long-term recovery. That means I haven't had a drug or drink since 2008, April, um, which is a long time. And, um, you know, unfortunately, this disease is also in my family, and so my oldest daughter uh, was looking for help. And, you know, at that point, I think I was eight, ten years old, I don't remember, but I had helped a lot of people around the, along the way. I had worked with some of the treatment centers. I had driven people and spoken and all that. I figured I should be able to get her help. But when I went, I got told, well, we got to put her on a waiting list. We got to, uh, you know, if she were using, she hasn't been using for three days. We can't take her. You know, there's not a treatment center close enough. She doesn't have the right insurance. And so um, at that point, uh, I realized I needed to do something to help. And I had had enough of Brad and not buying <laughs> extended warranties. <laughs> so I quit the car business and I went into this full time and I really did not know where this was gonna go. I just took a leap of faith and said, let's see where it ends up. Um, and where it ended up is I, I ended up with an amazing team, Cassandra, Marlene, Stephanie, Heather, we've got people back at the other office. I've got some new people joining my team. Where'd they go? There's Janelle over there, and John, and Elijah's around here somewhere, and I've got partners at the state level, Ben, Danny, and, um, you know, we're just keeping it, keeping it going. Eric is up in Rockford doing the exact same thing we do, and um, we're just trying to let people know that there is hope and, and that, you know, 
Sometimes it's not that we can help the person that's suffering, right? Sometimes it's the son of the guy that's suffering who's given up on dad and he needs to see that I was able to come from where dad is and, and turn my life around, right? Um, oftentimes when my staff goes into the hospitals, because we go in to the hospitals when, or the police stations or the fire departments or, or anywhere when somebody calls and says, I want help, we go in there and we help them find uh, a treatment or, or whatever may be the next step for them. And sometimes that person is already gone, right? We, we, we are not going to be able to help them. But there's an entire family around it. And if we can stop it from becoming intergenerational, we really, you know, we really hope to do that. So we house this place. This place is available to anybody in the community that wants to do substance use support meetings for free. So if you want to do a grief meeting, if you want to do a pregnant moms on drugs meeting, if you want to do left-handed people that, uh, you know, juggle and, and do drugs, then come on down. We got you. <laughs> We also have Heather's office here. Heather is our coordinator for the Ogle DeKalb Ross Council. That's a group of stakeholders. Many of you in this room, or many of you in this room should be on that council that are looking at the drug and alcohol issues in our community, mental health issues, and trying to figure out ways to uh, combat it. So right now we're working on the collegiate recovery community at NIU. We're working on putting together a recovery farm going to need you two guys on that one because we need a free farm. Um, <laughs> what else we got in the works? Um, well, we're working on a teen text line. We've teen got a meeting line. coming up with that pretty soon. And, you know, we're just trying to make sure that everybody in the community is involved with the ROSC, anybody that has any decision making um, capability or just anybody that is a person of lived experience because we want to make sure that everybody's voice is heard and that the people that can solve the problems for the people whose voice need to be heard are there to do that. She about said it all. <laughs> That's, uh, so thank you all for coming. Please let people know that we're here and this isn't just a place to send the people you're tired of listening to and dealing with. It's also a place to send somebody who says you know, I want to help. I want to. I want to find a way to volunteer and give back. I, I. I believe that we all have a purpose and we all have a talent, and you know. Those are where we connect with people, and, and so it may not be me screaming at a guy. You got to get your life together, right? It could be sitting here learning how to play the guitar with a guy, and he, you know, he says, you know what? As much as I want to play the guitar right now, can I tell you what's going on at home? And then there's a, a open line of communication. So anybody that's in recovery, send them over. We'll find something to do with them. And Chris, thanks for having our radio show on every Sunday. Yeah, you bet. All right. That's it. Thanks, Thank guys. You. And I'm here to say you folks have made the biggest impact of any ribbon cutting I've ever seen because you're about the future of people. So you're not selling products, you're about the future of people, which is a product of our environment. And the way you're talking about being able to help them is amazing. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Okay,